In this video, we're going to find the capacitance of a spherical capacitor. So this type of capacitor is made out of a conducting ball of radius A, and outside that ball, there's a conducting shell, a spherical shell of radius B surrounding the ball. And in order to find the capacitance, we're gonna start with its definition, is that the capacitance is equal to the charge on one of the plates of the capacitor, divided by the difference in voltage between the two plates and take the absolute value of that quantity. So to solve this type of problem, we need to assume that there's some charge on one or both of the plates. And then from there, we can find the voltage delta V. And so I'm gonna assume that there's a bunch of charge on the inner plate of there's a mount plus Q on the inner plate or the inner sphere. And there's a charge of minus Q on the outer sphere. Now capacitors always have the same amount of charge on both plates. That's sort of what makes them capacitors. So if we know that there's a charge of plus Q on one plate, there has to be a charge of minus Q on the other plate. So all we need to do to, sol to solve this problem is find delta V. So we already know Q. The only thing that remains to solve this problem is to find delta V. And how do we do that? Well, we can do that using electric fields. So we know that the change in voltage between two points, let's call them conveniently A and B, A, B, is equal to the integral of the electric field dotted with dr. So our electric potential is sort of the accumulation along the path that we take from point A to point B. So to figure out delta V, we need to figure out two things. We need to figure out dr and we need to figure out E. Now dr is pretty straightforward. Um, because this is a problem with spherical symmetry, we can work in spherical coordinates and in that case, dr is just equal to r hat, so the unit vector in the radial direction, multiplied by dr. And that's it. That's, that's all dr is. But what about the electric field? Well, we have to be kind of careful here because the electric field is due to the charge on both plates. So it's due to the, let's say, e inner plus e outer. So the charge, the electric field due to the charge on the inside plus the electric field due to the charge on the outside. Now, one of these is easier than the other. So the outer electric field, because we're, because this is spherically symmetric and we're inside the charge distribution, this is actually zero. And if you didn't know, uh, if you don't know why that is, you can actually use Gauss's law. So if we set up an imaginary surface inside our sphere, the enclosed charge is only the enclosed charge of this inner sphere. We don't capture any charge from the outer sphere. And so the electric charge due to all this negative charge, or sorry, the electric field due to all the negative charge on the outside is zero. So we only have to worry about the charge on the inside. Now you could use Gauss's law to find the electric field. You could also recognize that because this is spherically symmetric, it's going to be the same electric field as for a point charge. So my electric field is gonna be Q, so plus Q over four pi epsilon naught R squared times little r hat. So pointing out in the R direction, in the radial direction. So now we can take the dot product of these two because they're pointing in the same direction. E is pointing in the r hat direction and dr is pointing in the r hat direction. Their dot product is just going to be the product of their magnitudes. So E dot dr is just going to be plus q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared times dr. And so all that remains is we just need to integrate this. So we need to integrate e dot dr and slap a negative sign out front from, our, from a radius of a to a radius of b. So we just need an integral sign here, radius of a to a radius of b. 
Now, most of these things are constants. So q is a constant for pi epsilon naught is a constant. And so we can pull most of these things out of the integral. So we've got a q on top, and now it's got a negative sign because we picked up our negative sign. And then on the bottom, we've got a four pi epsilon naught. And now we're integrating from r equals a to r equals b, one over r squared dr. And if you do this integral, you'll get that the indefinite integral is just negative one over r. So we're left with q over four pi epsilon naught times one over r, because the two negative signs cancel. And we just need to plug in r equals a, because we're starting our integral at the surface of our inner charge and we're ending at our outer charge because we want to find the potential difference between these two plates. So if we plug in, so r equals b, r equals a, we'll get q over four pi epsilon naught, one over b minus one over a. And we're almost done. So this is delta v. This is what we we're looking for all along. This is what, what, we, what we need to find the capacitance. Now, signs don't matter here because we're going to take the absolute value. But if they did, if we did want to worry about them, this is the voltage at the negative plate, our final plate, minus the voltage at the positive plate, our initial plate. So to find the capacitance, C, all we need to do is divide the charge by delta V and take the absolute value. And so conveniently, delta V has a charge in it, so those two are going to cancel. So we've got Q over, oh, Q over four pi epsilon naught times one over B minus one over A. And so the all absolute value. And so the Qs cancel out, the four pi epsilon naught will get flipped up on the flipped up to the top, and we'll end up with four pi epsilon naught divided by one over B minus one over A. And this is our answer. This is the capacitance of a spherical capacitor with an inner radius of A and an outer radius of B. Now, if you wanted to get rid of these absolute value signs, because A is always gonna be smaller than B, the bottom is gonna be negative. And so if we just flip the directions or flip the order one over a minus one over b this is always going to be positive positive. and so this is the capacitance this is the formula that you'll usually see for the capacitor the capacitance of a spherical capacitor finally i'd like to thank all my patrons on patreon your support is greatly appreciated and it is you who makes these videos possible if you aren't currently a patron, to get early video access, behind-the-scenes footage, exclusive content, and join a like-minded community, click the link on screen or in the description below. Thanks for watching.